All right, so I believe where we last left Ankh and the Pale Lady was I was getting ready to ask for an action roll on what they wanted to do now that uh, kind of all chaos has broken loose. We're going to still put a pin in that, and we are actually going to turn our attention to Lem. Lem, what have you been up to since the goat races? Well, a lot of it's normal business, you know. It's, uh, you go out, you pick up the fares, you drop them off, you take the money. You make ends meet, but sometimes they just ain't enough. And you've got to make, make a bit of scratch on the side. So, falling in with a few friends made during the goat races. I was informed of these, uh, little bit of an opportunity should things go sideways. A security measure, if you will. With that being said, you are obviously in position at Night Market. When... You probably wouldn't be invited into the warehouse, not having the proper credentials, nor a fantastic piece of artwork that needs to be checked. However, you would... I would say, you would certainly be able to see despite the standard nighttime level darkness a Taichirosi that you're somewhat familiar with being escorted off the premises by a couple of blue coats oh you step up son right uh with that I'm gonna go around the side, have a look at who's who's parked up. You know, yeah, you know, the drivers of all the uh, well-to-do affluent people that are inside the building. See if I can spot uh, whoever's running this. <sighs> As you move around the side, you see an. There are several, and I mean several. This is this seems to be somewhat of a larger event, as it were. There's probably 10 to 20 carriages, most of them goat-drawn. There are maybe a couple with horses, but most of the drivers are around a small little... Uh, it's essentially an outdoor waiting area. Obviously, they have a place for the drivers to sit if they're not allowed into the event, you know, where they can, should it be raining, get out of the rain. Most of the people you see through the window are in there. There is one guy sitting upon the carriage looking a bit more anxious than the rest. Um, so, hands in pockets, I'm going to make my way over to him, and... Oh, what's going on here, then? Man, appears to be late teens, early twenties. He kind of gives a start... Ah, uh, um, uh, 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 I'm sorry, what? Oh, it's uh, something going on. You don't usually see there this many uh, fancy carriages around this part of part of night market, especially. You know what I mean, son? Oh, 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 yeah, <sighs> yeah. Um, uh, they're uh, they're authenticating artwork inside, and um, well, you know, when when there's a bunch of forgeries that go around, you know, the the upper echelons of society they get all all all, all, all so, uh, sorts of uh, nervous uh just calm yourself down all right don't don't get worked up just ask him uh, 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 are you uh, uh I, I, i'm i'm I, i'm uh, sorry i don't apologize don't apologize you're all right so you uh 
Who are you driving for then? Ah, uh, uh, um, he, 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 he's a, um, um, he, he's known as S S S Sinclair. Oh, no. And I'm going to take, uh, hand out my pocket with a uh, sort of old battered tin cigarette case, open it up and offer him one. Just calm down, mate. That that's why I'm apologizing, and he he kind of points to it, uh, his jaw, and he's like, "Born like this, sir." All oh, right, uh, so you hear it. Uh, but look, uh, it's Sinclair, fellow. What's he paying you? Uh, uh. He's just doing a uh, 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 thirty percent cut. I Oh uh, yeah. So the thing is, I was uh, I was going to offer to double it, but I don't have that kind of scratch. So I'm really sorry about this. And I'm gonna go into an old, an old cabby secret of um, an unusual weapon, and that would be a srock. It's a sock with a rock in it. <laughs> okay. What? <laughs> give me a skirmish roll. Oh, sorry. Give me a roll. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Success. Oh, I'm right. Success with the complication. Oh. Poor man's crap. <clears throat> All right. So, well, this individual is somewhat taken aback. Hold on. Taken aback by uh, a sock full of rocks. Um, he is somewhat quicker than you might expect. And instead of cracking him in the face or in the head, he's able to move and get his arm up. But you, s it still finds its mark. And you hear, you hear the sound of it hitting. But then you also feel a tug as it seems like when the sock hit his arm, it went a little bit over his arm and he got his hand up and was able to grab the other end of it. So now he's kind of got your, he's got some leverage on it and has, is now beginning to try and yank it out of your hand. Um, okay, I'm, I am happy to resist and as he's got it, just in with a head <laughs> All right, give me that resistance roll. This is going to be prowess. Yeah. Uh, oh. Wow. So you're going to take four stress there. <laughs> four stress. Oh, this is, not gonna, this is going very brutal. <laughs> I was going to say, this seems somewhat reminiscent here of what happened last time. Oh, yeah. However... You do resist. So, the headbutt is able to... He lets go just to get out of the way of it. And he... Oh, hey, 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 hey. No, no. I I, I don't want any... I, what? I, 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 I can't... I'll, I'll, I'll give you... I'll give you half. Just, I'm one half. Just your hat and coat. Kind of pauses for a moment. And quite literally, in almost one motion, it, it's actually somewhat impressive. He's able to remove his coat. It, it, it's almost graceful. And then just throws the hat on the ground and books it. Kind of clutching it. Yeah, arm. pick it up. <laughs> Pick it up, pull the collar up, hat on, low over the eyes. 
as close as I can to his and sort of close to as I can to his kind of uh, posture and and gait and a couple of kind of uh, you find that coat is actually pretty well fitted uh, you're roughly about the same size so uh, small graces but with that we're gonna go back into the warehouse Unk and Pale Lady. What is that action roll that we talked about so many weeks ago? So, he's still trying to get away, right? As far there. as you know, you were aware that this is definitely part of his scam that he's running here is uh game that he's playing you're aware of that being somewhat in the same field or at least having worked with a few people that are in the same field with that being said you're not entirely sure what the plan what his plan is you just know this is a part of his plan Okay. And currently he's just trying to leave the room, right? He's got his uh, goons up uh, holding up the building while he's trying to get away with the art, or he's just leaving? He is He is currently actually uh, down on the ground with everybody else because they commanded everybody down. Oh, And you okay. guys haven't gotten down, which is where uh, the action roll's coming in. Hmm. <laughs> okay, uh, could I use Prowl to, like, I don't know if this is, like, some sort of slide or, like, some sort of, like, quick army crawl over to him just to get over to where he's at without getting shot at. So you want to actually get down? Yes. But hopefully still move over to where he is, because I think we established that I'm not too far away from him. Because I was close enough that we were trading, like, uh, barbed banter back and forth. Mm -hmm. So, I would say, go ahead and give me a roll. And this is, okay. I would say this is desperate standard. Desperate standard. Because you have armed individuals willing to shoot, supposedly willing to shoot people here. So, I feel like this is desperate. Yeah. Yeah. No bonus dice, I'm all out of stress. Six? Your... Oh. Ooh. Well, uh, you're able to make some maneuvers over to Sinclair. He's he's watching you do it the entire time. It doesn't really matter that he's watching you, though, because, well, he's not the one with the gun <laughs> trained on currently blue coats trying to hold them at bay while there's a couple of others that have guns trained at different people in the crowd okay so I, I get down over to him I'm like so what's the plan here I, I can't imagine how you'd profit from getting held up by your own men that was your hand signal was it not as I'm like down on the ground next to him, I'm just like enth enthusiastically like chatting into his ear. Before he answers that, uh, Pale Lady, is there anything that you wish to do? Uh, yes, I'm going to pull uh, as well, but towards the the mo more fancy people that look that like they on the gallery, like, I'm trying to shield them. Maybe try to gain some gain some of trust. Some, some trust. Alright, go ahead and give me a roll. It's also going to be a uh, desperate standard. Um... Uh, 
Would you like to resist this? Okay, I... Uh... I know everybody's kind of full on stress, so I know resistance rolls are not, not a good thing. No, I won't. I won't. I can't. It's too risky. Okay. Um... Unfortunately, one of these individuals with their guns trained, grab you by basically the back of your collar and yanks you up and immediately pistol to your head. And I believe we said nobody move. You don't listen very well, do you? <laughs> At this point, going a little bit across the room here to Moreland. Not really across the room, but <laughs> Sinclair goes. <sighs> there, a, a, a sigh escapes his lips. So you're in the game as well. Well then, let's make this a little bit more profitable. And he kind of nods his head um, upwards at the situation going on with Pale Lady. I'm sure you want your friend to get out of this alive. Uh, these guys don't necessarily play the same game you and I do. How about this? Let's call this a wash. And we'll get, and I'll get you guys out of here, along with myself. Hands clean, so to speak. Wouldn't be opposed, but just one question. What were you hoping to get out of this? Oh, the same thing I got out of all the other ones that I've ran. I own this building. I'm the one running this. I'm sure you're smart enough to put two and two together. Or maybe I'm giving you too much. Hmm. Keep talking. Out of the two of us, I think my knife's faster. I would be partial to leaving here unscathed, though, if you could arrange that. Things have escalated to the point that I don't think either of us is going to be getting exactly what we want. I concur. And with that, Sinclair makes a small gesture. And two individuals or one individual comes over let me rephrase grabs him by the scruff holds a pistol up underneath his jaw and goes we're gonna be taking these individuals and whatever we want and then you do see Sinclair kind of lean back and whisper something I am going to roll a fortune roll here do we get plus one to that? This is not a game yes. of chance, but it does say all fortune rolls. Yeah. So. Number of dice. <laughs> this is going to be a... <clears throat> Five. Okay. You're able to catch bits and pieces, basically like... It, he's directing the men to grab certain artifacts, paintings, and then he is directing one to grab you as well. Doesn't seem like the blue coats are hearing it, but they are certainly attempting to cut off any sort of escape. Within the next few moments, somebody grabs you by the scruff, puts you under gunpoint, and the group begins to make their way out. Slowly. The two remaining individuals that 
are not having their hands full of people are grabbing both of both Sinclair's and yours's forgery, while another one is grabbing what you assume are probably real pieces. And slowly making their way out. Now, as part of the complication from that, there is a situation where as you guys get to the door, the blue coats have assembled in front of it. I, sorry, not gonna let you leave, especially with hostages. And they level their guns towards towards the individuals, which essentially is now putting you between a blue coat that's willing to shoot. And somebody that you really don't care gets shot. However, if they're going to get shot, you're probably going to get shot too. So I'll leave this up mm. to how you guys wish to handle this. Ah, uh, okay. So are we all clustered together? Yes, they're essentially moving through, trying to get out. So, they're all trying to go out the same way. And Caroline is, I, I assume, near me. You're all, yeah, all three of you, uh, Caroline, Morlin, and Sinclair, are all at the forefront. They're the first ones being led out. Yeah, Ca Caroline is shooting you, uh, I like... Uh, yeah. There's things I could do, but so many of them could lead to me just stressing out and getting a trauma. Uh, I am contemplating doing, trying to do a group prowl roll to try to, like, slip them real quick to get out of the way as hostages and him being, but he would still be there. And since they don't know that side, they would see Sinclair as another hostage, and they'd be a little more reticent to shoot. Uh, do you have any ideas, Caroline? Uh, I'm trying to think of a distraction. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you do have Compel, don't you? Yeah, but th is there any ghosts around us? Give me a mm. roll. Um, actually, hold up. Caroline can give me a roll. I believe... Unk. You are just natively aware of ghosts, are you not? I am, I am always aware of supernatural entities in my presence, and I take plus one dice when I gather info about the supernatural. That's what I thought. So while Caroline would have to roll... Yes. Um, how much of this can I see as well? The door's not open yet, so you wouldn't be able to see anything yet. Yeah. But what I will do here... I will make another fortune roll. You most certainly can hear raised voices right at the door. You're not too far away where it's incoherent. You can hear commands being issued, you know, and the like. So you can't, you're you somewhat aware of the situation on the other side of the door. Okay, so I'm happy to do this as an, uh, as an assist or I can make a separate role. Um, I want to go to like the net in the rank from where I've got the, the carriage. Um, I want to go to like the next one in the in the in the, the parking rank, go or horse, and just go up behind it and just slap its haunches as hard as I can. <laughs> Give me. I, I I feel like that is a separate roll. Thought it might be. Give me a roll here. Uh, I am going to finesse. 
Yeah, finesse is probably the right one. Are you handling the mount? I mean, yeah. All right, finesse. So, this acrosion goat that you've decided to slap, um, you notice something. As you, as you pull your hand back, it comes back a little red and wet. You've hit this acrosion goat on what appears to have been an old injury, causing it oh. to freak out. Sorry, goat. <sighs> And it bolts forward as fast as it can, trying to get away from this sudden sharp pain. And it goes straight into the building. Now, the building is mostly stone. That door, however, is not stone. It is wood. This door is not going to stand a chance. However... As this acrosion goat is not the largest of its breed, and this is more of a loading door, it's going through the loading door. So I'm <sighs> going to require a roll from Morlin, the pale lady, to avoid uh, a very panicked animal. <laughs> Can I do a group prowl roll? You like, may certainly. Because I have two in prowl. Yeah. No, uh, okay. So so we'd both roll prowl, and I'd take a hit if you roll a one or two. I think. Uh, as long so as she, as long as she fails, you take a hit. Yeah. Okay. So one through three, I'll take one yeah. stress. Yeah. Can you take that one stress comfortably? I can. Okay. I can. I won't trauma out, but I'll be one away. Okay. And you need to succeed as well, otherwise it's a two. Yeah. Oh, do I take another stress from me failing? Is yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, it's, it's every failed roll. Every failed roll. Oh. Uh, what, what would it change if I was to uh, leave the thing? Because I don't have any dots in prob, but I have. You can uh, still you can still leave the same lead things. Okay, I'm yeah. I'm going Just to. Just whoever leave leads is taking the stress. Yeah. Okay. So you're leading. Yeah, I am. Okay. Is this desperate? The. Yeah, this is desperate. Okay. Desperate. I carry XP. However, yeah. this is desperate with great effect because of the charging goat. Okay. If you guys succeed, uh, the blue coats are going to be absolutely bowled over. They're not going to know what the hell's going on. Do you want to roll first, Caroline, or should I? I'm going. Let's go. Oh. Okay. Okay. You did better than I did. We both succeeded. Success with a complication, however, it's great effect. Yes, it is. <laughs> so, so, you guys get out of the way. No questions asked. The people holding you do not. The people with the artwork behind them do not. The blue coats do not. As this goat begins to just run wildly throughout this warehouse. Knocking over tables. It is just complete and, and utter mess. Uh, the only three people left standing, or actually the only four people left standing, are the one holding Sinclair, Sinclair, and the two of you. Uh, Sinclair kind of looks at the two of you and goes, um, well, <laughs> and he actually makes kind of a gesture of, uh, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and he he starts to kind of move out of his own volition while the other guy quickly grabs the paintings and uh, ditches his quote-unquote compadres as uh, 
Sinclair does? Sinclair's gesturing for you guys to uh, board a specific carriage while the other guy picks up the pieces of artwork and then leaves the guys laying on the ground. Mm. Sinclair. But I, is there any artwork currently like near me? Yeah, there's uh, some. You could grab a couple of pieces. Before. Could I grab? Yeah, could I grab a few pieces on on the way out? Yep, most abs most assuredly. It, if there was ever gonna be a time where it's not noticed, it's during a wild goat rampage. So I think we should take uh, advantage of this yes. opportunity. Mm -hmm. Will that require a roll? Uh. No, because obviously this goat's knocking things around. So, I mean, there's going to be a couple of pieces that skid towards you that aren't going to be that damaged. However, Lem, this individual, blonde, seemingly well-to-do, hops on the carriage that you were, that you had taken and kind of gives you a look, kind of like, get on, like, He's not looking at you too closely. He's just n n kind of giving you a quick glance and kind of giving you a head move. Is it, is it like an open air, um, like rear mounted drive or is it like the closed front front seat? Front seat. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, I'll be straight in the seat and just glance in our, um, our unk or Caroline anywhere nearby. Are they getting in? Or I feel like we'd both be like not far behind. If anything, yeah. we'd be a we'd be like right where they are, right where he is. You, Sinclair's a little bit ahead of you, uh, because you you would have grabbed some artwork, so you'd be back with the other dude essentially. That's now. Just... You hear Sinclair's voice. Come on, we don't have all day. Come on, come on. Um, He's I'll, waiting I'll for us to get on. Yeah. Or his uh, compatriot. He's telling all of you to get on. Oh, okay. Mm. Okay. Guess we're getting That's on. That's cool, yes. As the three of you enter, he slams the door shut behind him and then shouts out, get us out of here. Okay, is this a horse or a goat? Just This out is of... a goat. I'm... He's not quite yeah. that rich. <laughs> okay, so yeah, just uh, like a kind of like, kind of uh, lighter, I don't want it to go full buck wild but a sort of little crack of like the riding crop just get it on its way crack of the rain reins i'm gonna say speedy but not i'm gonna say these are fairly well trained animals despite the fact they're goats so i'm not gonna require a roll here to get them to go sinclair grabs the bridge of his nose Oh. Ooh. Well, that could have went better. It sure could have. Do you often have goats running through your establishment? It doesn't seem very sanitary. That was... He kind of shakes his head. Wow. Never had that happen before, and I don't think that'll ever happen again. Was that a work of performance art, maybe? I, I have... I don't know. Can't really forge performance art. So, um, certainly not on my role. Uh, I feel like now that the... Hmm, I don't want to say danger has passed. Our tense disputes have passed. <sighs> Formally introduce myself. I am Sinclair, and who do I have the pleasure of speaking with? Well, I go by Ankh, and I just have to say, I apologize. Your goatee isn't as nearly as unkempt as I implied earlier on. Just wanted to goad you a little bit. It is quite defined, quite refined and gentlemanly. If I do say so myself. And 
and this is Caroline. But you can introduce yourself. I mean, yeah, Caroline. Uh, so, how did you uh, come across such a similar idea for a game, as it were? Well, there's no such thing as an original idea. Uh, we do have a acquaintance that had suggested this venue of deception as a last hurrah before we uh, bow down for a little bit. City's not always the most forgiving. Uh, the I'm assuming that's the Tysa, uh, the Tysarosi individual. He kind of he leans back and opens the little sliding door that would allow him to speak more easily with the driver. Um, I forget your name. Doesn't matter. Were you privy to a individual being escorted out by blue coats a little bit ago? Um, and heading, heading north, are we in Six Towers yet? It would take a little bit to get to Six Towers, so no, you're not in Six Towers quite yet. Crack the reins and go a little bit faster. Ignore him. Uh, there's your impediment acting up? Uh, whatever. Uh, I need you to cut off a blue coat escort back to the precinct. I wish to pick up another individual that is currently in custody, or at least being escorted out. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, did I say if he was just kind of... Was he actually escorted away, or was he just uh, unsanctimoniously he being, booted from the venue? He was being at least escorted some distance away. You never saw the blue coats leave, and you didn't see them come back. But that just could mean that they were—they may have drug him into an alley some way to give him a, you know, good old-fashioned beat down. You're not entirely sure. Um. Well, at this point, I will turn around. It's the well, unfortunately, some. I'm sure he can handle himself, but we've got to have a chat somewhere else. Sinclair slides the door shut. Gives a deep breath. Looks over at Moreland and Caroline. So, um, there's another snafu that um, I've just become privy to. Being driven by a stranger, it seems. Yes, my usual driver has a very incorrigible stutter. Even on his best day, he would never be able to formulate a sentence that cohesive. <laughs> you see a look of some oh. concern, but uh, not a large amount of concern, which does... Um, say one thing. The driver gets a 30% cut, so all of a sudden now... 30% of the cut is now available for bribing, so I'm not too concerned. Also, a vast majority of my other crew is now gone, which they were receiving a 20% 20% cut. Now that there's only one individual, his cut's going to remain the same. I'm going to now cut those people free. He's sort of muttering this underneath his breath as if he's kind of thinking aloud. Which means I probably have roughly about a 45% cut before I start having to let go my part of the deal. 
I have plenty of bribing money. I'm not overly concerned. I'm sure I can outbid whoever hired this individual. Uh, does Caroline or Morlin wish to interject as he's kind of just muttering to himself, thinking aloud? Would you stop to consider that? Maybe he was sent here to take you in particular somewhere? It's a dangerous city and it's a dangerous business. Do you happen to have any enemies that might want to see you unsafe? Having enemies oh. in our line of work means you didn't do a very good job. Well, our line of work is quite uh, close knit, as you just saw. Uh, we didn't, we haven't been very well acquainted before this, and yet we've stumbled upon the same job. I'm sure, in your career, you might have danced on a few toes on a job or two. Let's see. You speak to me as if I was some riffraff grifter. I'm cut above, but from a different cloth. However, you want to phrase the same. They did. You're doing a bad job at this if you're making enemies. I'm very confident that this is unrelated to any of my past ventures. Mm. You see, even with how badly that last one ended, how can any of that come back onto me? Yes, I left behind four people with concussions. They're not going to remember the events that happened there. That goat, uh, goats have that effect when they go on rampages. For all it looks like, I have been taken hostage. I come out smelling like a rose. That's the way it should always be. See, maybe you haven't been in this game. You've been in this game, obviously, long enough to pick up a few things here or there. One of the key rules of a true con, my friend is that you leave the person that you conned indebted to you. They should think you're a swell stand-up individual. If they don't, then you've done something wrong along the way. However, he kind of gives the two of you a knowing I. I wouldn't say that you're necessarily in your chosen career path. I. No, I'm afraid some things had to have gone wrong for the three of us to end in this uh, hostage situation. From one hostage situation to another, it's honestly quite comedic if you think about it. Oh, the irony is not lost on me. He does chuckle. Mm -hmm. and, and I, bored of waiting, just go over, like, knock on the little sliding door, open it, and I'm like, So, is there anywhere in particular you want to ditch our bodies? Or is it kind of just a uh, opportunistic thing? Oh, well. You know, as much as I love to see a gondolier buy it. I thought, uh, it's more our friend. I thought, let's go to Six Towers. Those shoes, that coat, well, a do person like that. And, well, it's famously a district we don't go, we don't do pickups in. I'll give them 10 minutes. Hmm. As you so, cross the bridge into Six Towers, 
a rather large group of individuals begin to form somewhat of a blockade. Leaving this. And they do start making a rather large display. Oh. Forcing the goat we got a, to stop. We got a local wildlife. <laughs> so you're going to attempt to make the goat go through? No, no. Um. You. You got roughly two minutes to cut a deal. As the goat pulls to a stop, one of the individuals, he mounts the carriage, but he doesn't open the door. He kind of leans his body through the open window. He looks in. All right. Two minutes. Kind of, he says, looking back at the driver. Yeah, two minutes, and then the fancy man's all yours. Uh, fancy man kind of looks at him. All right. So, our deal here was with you. Kind of points at Sinclair. Things changed real quick, however. And he makes a gesture at the others. Morlin or Caroline, are you looking out the window? Yes. Yes. You would see two individuals hauling, hauling out a rather bloodied Brolin. They bring him over to the carriage and kind of toss him right at the, basically the step ladder that allows you to actually get into the carriage. Are they like guarding the door or could I like open it and try to like drag him in? Uh, he the door that he's being drugged to is the one that the guy's leaning in through the window on. Oh. Um. Seems like you've fallen into some interesting people. Inter anyways, as soon as this individual finally, I don't want to say blabbed because that we were aware of a certain job and had hoped that maybe we would come across to the others. Your little run is over. And then he gestures at the t at Caroline and Marlin. Tell you what, we'll let bygones be bygones. Big enough people. Certainly better than you. You are to leave Rosefoot. If you even show so much as a strand of hair in Crowsfoot, we'll make sure that your lamps never turn back on. You should understand who's talking to you right now. And you should understand what I mean. Right? We have an understanding here. Look, we're such a good group of individuals here. We even let him live instead of dragging him off to Baz. We know Baz has some unfinished business with that one. Much appreciated. I'm sure there's nothing we could possibly want out of Crow's Foot, so... Nothing... No problems here. Do you have any problems, Caroline? I don't have any problems. No problems. 
See, no problems. Glad to hear it. Also, all the artwork and whatever else you have in here, we want it. Non-negotiable as well. Oh. There's there, then not on it anyway. Sinclair clicks his tongue. Deal, but the driver takes takes us where I want. After this, so he says that loud enough for Lem to hear that as well. I'll sort of lean down, look through the uh, the little hatch, and I just thought, honestly, thought we had him for a moment there. Do we have an accord? Fine by me. Give up the artwork. He kind of sighs. You can see he is very annoyed by this, but there's roughly about eight individuals. He's done the math in his head. He knows this this is not a winnable situation. <laughs> the one thug that is in the carriage starts slowly handing them out the window. Anything that would fit out the window. Do be careful. Quite a few of them are counterfeits. Yeah. Sinclair kind of shoots you a look of like, really? <laughs> <laughs> Once the artwork has been esconded with and Brolin is helped into the carriage, then Claire kind of leans back and goes, Brightstone, uh, whatever your name is. What is your name's? Uh, oh, sorry, yes, uh, it's only, it's... Prince call me Lem. But you ain't one of them, are you? So I suppose it's Lembrecht. Well, I like to start things off on a good foot, Lem. But I will continue to call you Lem. You seem a capable driver, and honestly, I tired of my last drivers. Um, rough way of speaking. Let's just phrase it like that. So, once you take me back to Brightstone, to my humble abode, do you can almost hear the quotations around humble. I'll give you a cut. Don't worry. I want to establish a working relationship. If that's agreeable to you. Or the same to you. Prefer if uh, you took your old board back into back into employment. He may not be able to string a sentence together, but he's a good kid. And me, well, I'm just a cabbie. Yourself. And the carriage continues to clatter through six towers, making its way north towards Brightstone. You have just finished listening to this week's episode of Blades in the Dark, What Happens in the Dusk, part of the Domain Gaming, written and told by Wyvarian and LifeSpark. A special thanks to you, the listener, and if you wish to continue supporting us, subscribe, like, and share. As always, comments are welcome. Until the next chapter, remember the first rule of a con. Offer them everything for nothing, and give them nothing for everything. <laughs>